Hello everybody, welcome to That's Football. I'm Mark Goldbridge and some big breaking news coming out from the Premier League that Sandro Tonali, the Newcastle midfielder who is already serving an eight-month ban for gambling charges from his time in Italy with AC Milan, has been charged today by the Premier League with another 50 breaches in relation to gambling in his time in the Premier League between August and September. Sensational news, really sad news. We'll delve into it. What are your thoughts? But look, first of all, from Newcastle's point of view, what is going on with their recruitment there? I mean, we talk about this with, I mean, funnily enough, Dan Ashworth could be coming to Manchester United. I mean, is there a bit of a concern there? Because look, there's a sad side to this, and this is a gambling addiction. You've got an individual, whether they're a professional footballer or not, they've got an addiction. It's very, very clear. Uh, he will have joined from AC Milan, fully aware of his investigation, fully aware he's probably going to get a ban and still continue to do it while at Newcastle. That is horrific. It's sad. It's an addiction. And whether it's drink, drugs, gambling, whatever, that is an addiction, pure and simple. And as football fans, whether you're a Newcastle fan or whatever other fan, I think we have to express a sadness and... and, and um, 100% that's how I feel. It's like people will say quite rightly, look, you, you can't have that in the game. It's a professional sport and it, the integrity is is massive when you've got a footballer who's, who's gambling on the game that they're playing on and there must be punishment, but there must also be rehabilitation. There must be support because this is a player that's clearly got a problem. As I said, AC Milan, he's got loads of charges. He comes to, it, comes to England and carries on doing it. So really, really sad. Could there be a new ban? We'll talk about that. But... I think this is something we've said at Manchester United about, and it's nothing to do with gambling, just some of the players United have bought over the years. You question their mentality to be a Manchester United player and do people do these background checks on what these, you know, speak to coaches, speak to family, what are they like as an individual? Because you are paying them hundreds of thousands of pounds a week. You're paying tens of millions of pounds for these players. And if something goes wrong, you're up shit creek without a paddle. And Newcastle here are in a situation where they bought a very, very good footballer. Did they not expect these charges to turn into a ban? And then when they bought that footballer, he's continued to do those things. So, yeah, I think as a Newcastle fan or, or a non-Newcastle fan, you've got to look at it and go, look, we've got to provide support to this player and addiction's a horrible thing. But did we not look at this, do something about this, think this might happen? Were we aware of this? when we went and spent all that money. Um, it's incredible, really. Uh, it's incredible when you've got a footballer, like I say, who, you know, he's done it with AC Milan, signs for Newcastle, and he's done it again. Um, but look, what's the future going to be for Tonali? And I must just say here as well, we're, we're very, you know, we're very good in this country and the media is very good in this country at building people up and knocking them down. But I think there is a responsibility here to say that Tonali is not the only player that's done this. Ivan Tony is not the only player that's done this. There is probably a lot of footballers out there who squeaky bum time at the moment thinking, I hope I'm not going to be the next player that gets caught because there will be other footballers out there that we don't know their names who have problems, addictions, whether it's gambling or other things. So let's not pretend that this is an isolated incident. It will be a problem. It's a problem in society and it's a problem in football, of course. And I think that... Um, what, what you have here is a player that is really struggling with something and, and needs the support. Will the Premier League ban him further? He's meant to be back in August for a new season with Newcastle. Um, the Premier League discovering new charges. Um, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. I mean, part of me thinks, well, um, if he's been found to do this after being caught of other things, you know, where is the rehabilitation, where is the change? However, if it's before he's had his charge, they could argue that, look, ever since he's been charged, he's not done anything. So look, I, I don't know. I don't know how they'll pan it out. I mean, look, I, I've got to say, I'll go back to what I said before. I thought an eight month ban was 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 very big in the first place. And we've seen it with, 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 with Ivan Tony as well. Um, yeah, I don't I don't know that I think I don't know what I think about bans in the first place. I think there has to be some punishment, of course, but um, it's an interesting one. I'd be interested to see, uh, read some of the chats on this. But as I said, 
my initial two thoughts are is, is first of all, Newcastle uh, and, and then the player. Um, I've just realised this is right next to me. I've got right into the topic here. Goldbridge Saves Football podcast is out now. If you're watching on a Thursday evening, it's just dropped. It's our Premier League uh, weekend preview. Goldbridge is back. We've got some amazing either ors. Ben White's better than Carl Walker. Check it out. Arsenal, I don't think are going to win against Man City. I want them to win. Uh, United's bounce back. The race for top four. The, the, the relegation race. Loads to get your teeth into. If you want to listen, check it out by scanning the QR code and support the podcast ultras. Uh, appreciate that. But yeah, look, I think um, I think this is just uh, football needs to face up to these things head on. You know, we've got financial fair play. We've got the VAR. We've got the PGMOL. We've got these things going on with Tonali, Tony and maybe others. Football isn't just a game of football. It's it's the biggest sport in the country. And there has to be integrity. There has to be laws. Uh, and, you know, more and more football is becoming about what goes on beyond the 22 players on the pitch. Whether it's officiating, whether it's financial issues, whether it's things like this, um, they're, they're going to happen. And I think that the most important thing is that we treat this sport like what it is. There is so much money involved in it. We must have high standards. We must have professionalism. We must have support networks. And, you know, there's been all this demand for regulation, etc. But we, we have to realise that these players are human beings as well. And many of us sit back and go, I can't understand how that's happening. Why has that been allowed to happen? And we can't understand it because we don't know it. Some footballers come from poverty. Some footballers live in a bubble. They don't know what it's like to, you know, go to school, get your qualifications, work hard, you know, get a job in a bar just to get yourself through college, this, that and the other, you know, work hard from the bottom to the top. Some of them have been professional footballers since they're eight. You know, they've gone they've, and they've made it and they've gone all the way through, surrounded by people t telling them how great they are and showering them with money. And th that's how you end up going down these pathways sometimes, because... There isn't a grasp of reality. There's a lot of downtime. There's a lot of people throwing money at you. Um, and there's a lot of downtime. And that downtime can lead to things that, you know, you imagine if you're born into money. You imagine if the whole, you know, your whole upbringing, you don't need to worry about money. You've just got people throwing stuff at you. And then, you know, that to, to me or you would be, oh, my God, I can't believe it. I'm getting this. I'm getting that. They want to do this. Oh, my God, it's amazing. I could live off this for years. But if you're used to that, where, where, where do you get your next kick? What's the thing that gives you that, oh, I want that, I want that. And, and that's where people wander off and do these things and these stories come out. So look, there's always a human level. I don't think we can say, oh, professional footballer, privileged position, shouldn't be doing that. Because what goes on in somebody else's head it's very, very different. I, I know people are multimillionaires. They're depressed. I know people who, who aren't, who are the happiest people in the world. You know, you, you don't know what's going on inside somebody's head. It's really important. He's a really good player. And it's really important that somebody helps him and provides that support. Because whether he's back in August or he's back next August or he's back at Christmas, whatever, there's a good player there. Obviously, there's major issues there. And what we need to see is proper support for this player so that he can do what he's meant to be doing, which is performing on a football pitch. I, I remember him being linked to Man United before he was at AC Milan. I was like, I really like this player. Um, and, you know, it just shows that anybody can go off the rails and hopefully, hopefully this will be the end of the matter and he can get the support he can. But it's certainly, um, it's certainly a shock. Um, but look, you know, I think football needs to stand up and, and do its thing here. Whatever the punishments are going to be, I think the most important thing is the rehabilitation of the player. Because as soon as I read this and looked into it, I was like, he knows he's going to get in trouble for the Italian stuff. He's come over to England and he's carried on doing it. That's destructive, self-destructive. Uh, there, th th there is a personality uh, there that needs help, definitely. Get your comments in below, smash the like on the video and subscribe. Uh, and don't forget to check out the podcast right now by scanning that QR code. I'll speak to you all in a bit.